Hello, Carl here with Sustainability Theory News. We're going to be doing a video today on potassium, potassium deficiencies in plants, the importance of it, and some organic sources for it. So when you have a potassium deficiency, like on this tomato plant, for instance, it oftentimes yellows and maybe even browns between the veins of the plant's leaves. So the veins are where the plants move um, moisture and nutrients to the growing leaf surface. And uh, sort of like the veins of blood, it moves blood throughout our body. But between the veins, if you see yellowing or discoloration, it's a sign of potassium deficiency. Now, this is a great article from the Maine Organic Farmers and Gardeners Association on potassium in plants and how it works. So, simple chemistry, talking about cation exchange capacity. Potassium is a positive ion. So you're going to need something with a negative ion to store it. So something with a high cash on exchange capacity. That's going to be fresh wood chips, uh, other organic matters, you know, mulches and whatnot. Maybe even some manures are mixed with straw, but really a uh, clay is also has a very high cash on exchange capacity. If you have an all sand soil, well, you maybe you have something with high cash on exchange capacity. We're going to be talking about green sand as well, which also has an incredibly high cash on exchange capacity and a high amount of potassium. Green sand is a zeolite that is mined, and we'll get more into that in a moment. But it's a, just a good article right here about what CEC or cash on exchange capacity is. I recommend reading it if you have more questions, but it's sort of like the fuel tank of nutrients. The higher the CEC of a soil, the bigger the fuel tank or amount of nutrients that that soil can hold. Sulpomag, uh, sulfur, potassium, magnesium, it is a mined rock, again, so that will break down very slowly. Wood ash can be absorbed kind of quickly. And um, potassium sulfate, which is another rock product, which absorbs really, really slowly. Wood ash can sometimes have heavy metals and maybe plastics, depending on what you're burning in your uh, wood boiler or fireplace or fire pit. So green sand is a great source of potassium. It is not water soluble though, although, and we'll go to a f uh, Amazon sites that are selling it. They sell micronized green sand and say that you can use it as a foliar spray. And let's see this article here. I, this is the only place I found that had instructions on how to mix a foliar spray. One quarter to half a cup per thousand square feet to mix in a spray. So if it's not completely water soluble, I keep shaking that spray bottle while you're spraying it. And as you can see from the nutrient breakdown, it's got a lot more potassium than nitrogen and phosphorus, but still got a pretty good amount of phosphorus. So you want to mix it with something that has high nitrogen, like a uh, manure, chicken manure, for instance, or a uh, bed, animal bedding that's soaked with animal urine. It also has incredibly high amount of iron. Iron is great for plants. It helps build stronger leaves and uh, cell walls, I believe. So it helps uh, the plant prevent fungal infections like pottery mildew, for example. Back to how to use green sand. Good article. Um, it is considered generally safe versus, say, an azomite or a mined cowling clay, uh, granite dust. Those are more likely to have silicates, which are hard to breathe. Or you breathe them in, causes damage. Like uh, asbestos, I believe, contains those um, dangerous silicates. They say green sand does not, and uh, used in water filters, I believe it's not as well. But it's like diatomaceous earth, natural diatomaceous earth that's mine, might not have very many silicates, but then if it's crystallized in a furnace, very dangerous. Azomite, uh, let's see here, one of these here, azomite can be used as well as kaolin clay to remineralize the soil. Kaolin clay, though, like diatomaceous earth, can uh, really keep the bugs away. It breaks into their shells and basically dries them out. But it's also a good source of micronutrients and potassium. As well as azomite, very good amount of micronutrients. This is a mined volcanic ash compound, but it's got more potassium than nitrogen and phosphorus. And um, some people say you can use azomite as a foliar spray, but it's not water soluble either. So what I recommend for water solubility, if you want to say, have a 
foliar spray of potassium. For tomatoes, for instance, you want to have good nitrogen up front, but you want to have a good amount of potassium available right when the flowers start coming, so they'll produce lots of flowers and lots of fruit. And uh, a foliar spray would be great. So granular humic acid powered powder comes from uh, lenardite, or lenardite, pulverized lenardite, unaltered oxidized lignite. It's a mined product, but it a lot of sources say it is water soluble, especially if it's in an alkaline compound, in alkalized water. You don't want to be too alkalized, it might damage a plant, but whenever you create a foliar spray, you usually want to test it out on one or two plants first, or on a couple of leaves, to make sure it doesn't damage a plant. Wait a day or two, see what happens. But with foliar sprays, the nutrients can get absorbed to the plant's leaves right away, rather than taking its sweet time, moving from the roots up to the shoots and into the leaves. So phosphorus, for example, moves incredibly slowly half an inch a day inside the plant. So it would be greatly used in a foliar spray. But again, we're talking about potassium. And green sand, again, is that zeolite compound. It's used in um, water filtration and lots of things like that. Pool filtration as well. And when it's micronized, it is claimed to be able to be foliar applicated or as they say here, liquid application. So you might be able to mix it with some water and just spread it in the on the root base or pour it on the root base uh, sort of like a hydroponic type of watering so i will be linking to these amazon links in the description it will be an affiliate link so it will support my channel if you have any ideas on how to get more potassium into your plants please let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see more videos like this subscribe to my channel and like this video if you liked it have a great day